we are huge fans of Fallout. Now, I don't just mean body positive. I mean we are actually really into the Fallout games. And we wanted to talk today about five things that we think future Fallout games need. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. We appreciate you very, very much. Let's hop into it. Number five. So, Nate, one of the first things that you and I both talked about was expanding on mechanics from Fallout 4 and from New Vegas. Mm hmm Like, for example, the building mechanics. I know you, in particular, really enjoyed this. Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite things about 4, actually, was just building, like, a house, setting up different shells, and displaying your, your stuff in it. And after just playing through New Vegas, I was severely disappointed that that wasn't in there. I thought it was a really cool feature about 4. The displaying of items and stuff like that, I felt like did not really work that well in New Vegas. No. And there's already issues too in, in games like New Vegas and 3. Even if you do go to display different items, they have a chance to fall through the floor yeah. or have issues with them. And you know, this was fixed by mods. Mm -hmm. So modders did add that into Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas as well, where you had shelves, you had different places you could click and store items and they would appear on the wall or appear on a shelf or whatever. They did a really good job with that, but the problem that we had with it with you know, those base games like 3 in New Vegas is that they didn't just have that in there. Right. I think this is something they need to expand on and keep going with in the next Fallout because that does make it feel like it's your world. You know, mm -hmm. you are living in it. The sky is the limit on what you can do. Introducing unique collectibles to the world other than just bobbleheads that you can display would be really cool. Adding in more different things that you can build with because again, Modders also fixed that in Fallout 4, where they added in thousands of items you could use in your homestead. Right. And build, like, different walls, different weapons, different, uh, you know, defense items, different decorations and posters and everything. Mm -hmm. If they really doubled down on that, they could easily make those, those mechanics amazing. Well, and also they could just add in a lot of, like, cool historical items, like Robert E. Lee's sword. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, cool items like that. Also, I think that they should really expand on companion mechanics with this like there should be more dialogue this is something that fallout new vegas did much better than four mm -hmm. for example there was way more dialogue and it felt like every character had their own story and personal growth to some extent whereas i'd argue i guess a few characters felt like that in four i suppose kate kind of felt like that piper kind of felt like that and hancock mm -hmm. sort of did and uh you know, like, they did a decent job with that, but it wasn't nearly as in-depth where there weren't these really interesting side missions to do for those characters, or, you know, it didn't feel like you were actually bringing them along on an entire journey that they were a part of. It just kind of felt like, in 4, a lot of times they're just tagging along. Number 4! It's the fourth one. 4! The next one is bringing back memorable factions other than just the Brotherhood of Steel. I am not saying they can't be in the game, I get they're iconic, but they have been in the game so many times, and it's getting to the point where they are just sort of molded to whatever they want to do with them in the story. Do you want them to be the OG classic Brotherhood of Steel? Okay, cool, then they're gonna be a bunch of dicks, you know, like right. who seize technology from everyone and make people's lives almost worse in some ways, like in New Vegas or in 4, where they're almost insufferable a lot of the times. Or do you want them to be like nice good guys? Well, then we'll just write them that way with Elder Lions in Fallout 3, where his branch is nicer than other branches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just kind of put the Brotherhood wherever they want and make them whoever they want to be in a given game. And I'd rather see some other character factions back, like the New California Republic or Caesar's Legion again, or even post-nuke tribes. There, there's a lot of stuff they could do. Yeah, my problem with the Brotherhood is that uh, I don't really know what they are. Because, like, I played Fallout 4, and I kind of viewed the Brotherhood as, like, a bad guy, right? But then I played Fallout New Vegas, and I'm kind of like, well, these people are actually kind of good. So it's like, who are these people? Kind of like you said, it's just they write them conveniently to coincide with the story. And it's like this group has no definitive, like, answer of who they are. That's kind of why I want to see other people, is I think I like the Brotherhood of Steel, but I think the other factions are also interesting as well. Caesar's Legion is interesting, how they're just basically graphic douchebags that <laughs> are obsessed with just, like, destroying and graphically murdering everyone. Yeah. 
but even like the NCR is kind of interesting, and and I really like the the Minutemen from Four. Yeah, like they're one of my favorite people ever. And even like the rail, the railroad gets like no love at all. Yeah, they get railed. The NCR, for example, if you look at that faction, and now I'm biased. This is probably my favorite Fallout faction. I will admit. Okay. If you look at the writing behind the NCR. It's a lot deeper than, say, the writing behind the Brotherhood in Fallout 4. Yeah. Because the writing of the NCR goes all the way back to classic Fallout, the old, you know, top-down RPG games. And it kind of stays true even into New Vegas. This is an expanding republic, an expanding attempt at reestablishing order in the world and democracy. But because of that, it has a lot of problems. There's lots of corruption. They're slow to move on things. The NCR, you could actually see like the reasons behind them is they wanted a, they wanted a stable universe. They wanted that old like government be from before the nukes back again. But yet, they don't really have the resources or the manpower to really sustain that. No. It's interesting. And then you have Caesar's Legion where someone's seizing onto a different part of history and sort of like using that as a basis to rally people behind them and their cause. There's interesting writing there. You know, I, I do want to say in defense of the Brotherhood of Steel, not to overextend this point, there are good things about them. Like, for mm -hmm. example, in Fallout 3, we definitely know why Elder Lions Fallout 3 Brotherhood of Steel is nicer than the other ones, than like the outcasts in the game, or then, but when you get to New Vegas, where they're kind of a middle ground, sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're complete pricks, and then you get to four, where it's like almost at every turn, the Brotherhood is just ridiculously douchey, mm -hmm. like they're racist towards synths, they can't actually accept new life, they can't accept that people maybe have hit the point where some of them can handle this technology. You start to get into a point where it's like that faction is more obnoxious and not as deep as previous factions were. So I think they really need to find a way to flesh out all of these factions give them a solid core identity. You can make changes depending on where they are. Number, number three. three! Number three! Number three! Number three! Number three! I think you can speak to this point better than me, which is more memorable historical locations and places of significance that make you feel like you are actually in the real world. Yeah, this is my favorite aspect about Fallout, actually, is... When you are walking around a map, um, whether it's in 4 or New Vegas... Or Twitter. Or Twitter. But when you're walking around, like, the world and you can actually see real-life locations. Like, for example, the first time I played Fallout 4, I was, like, blown away because I had actually just gotten back from a trip to Boston. So when I played Fallout 4, it was like, oh, there's, like, the State House. I, I saw that in real life. Oh, there's this building. I saw that. There's Fenway Park. I went to a game there. And to me, like, that was exciting, you know, and then with New Vegas, like, I've been out to Vegas, obviously, so, like, that was exciting, too. And what even was more exciting to me is when I actually looked at a real-life map of, like, the Vegas and the surrounding area, um, conveniently on Twitter, this map was at, but... Oh, wow. Towns like Prim, towns like Good Springs, towns like Nipton, those are actually real-life towns, and they actually exist in, like, the real world, and I, I don't know, I, I thought this is cool. I and wonder how, like, someone who lives in Nipton felt playing the Nipton portion of New I Vegas. know, I know. <laughs> They're just, just like, like, oh, that uh, was my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, this is something cool. And even in, like, Fallout 3, we can go to D.C. and see, like, the Washington Monument. Now it's destroyed. But, or, like, the Jefferson Memorial or something. Like, I don't know. The, the Jefferson Davis Memorial? Yeah, the Jefferson Davis Memorial. It's, like, a huge statue in D.C. Okay. But this is something I really want for the next Fallout game, because this is something I felt was kind of boring with 76, was 76 takes place in like West Virginia, but there's not really a lot of iconic spots. And I know it, com I know it comes down to like the Appalachian Mountains, like what are you gonna put in there besides the mountains? But that's, that's something that was not as interesting to me about 76. And I feel like there's a lot of good places you can go to, like you can go to New York City, you can have one in, you know, like South Dakota with like Mount Rushmore and stuff like that, I think would be kind of interesting. You know, there's a lot of cool places around the United States that you can go to that are more interesting to me than the Appalachian Mountains. Well, even if you think about it too, you know, to speak to 76, the only interesting place I know of in the game, there's maybe a handful for, you know, real historical locations, but they're not 
that plentiful. One of them I know of is I believe there is a Civil War museum there, mm -hmm. which is in the actual game, which does have some interesting stuff. Like you can get, I believe, Confederacy and Union uniforms there, which is pretty yeah, cool. Which, by I the way, going in that. by the way, when we when we play this game online next time, one of us should wear the Confederacy uniform, and one of us should wear the Union uniform. That'd be awesome. We have to like rock paper scissors to see who's racist. And also to see who gets Confederacy and Union. Right, right. There's two games. Can we just both win? Speaking to your point on different places in America, I know Fallout has always been seen as an American franchise, and that's mm -hmm. cool, but there always is room to establish, you know, other parts of the world. Like, what's going on in other parts of the world? Like, Africa. I don't know. Like, what is the rest of the right, world up right. to right now? We've never really seen much of that. Mm -hmm. And I also want to see, now this is the only thing I care about, but I want to see, like, historical things, too. But as I expand like, my fan base into China, I want to see a Chinese Fallout game. Same, actually. Oh, would I you actually? actually? I actually would like to. That'd be oh, cool. Cool. I actually want to see cool historical artifacts as well. Like, not just the locations, but I want to, like, go to, like, a museum or something and pick up, like, Teddy Roosevelt's, like, sword, you know, or, like, use Jefferson Davis's gun, for example. I will say Fallout 3, one of... One of my favorite things in there is that there is a whole quest tying into Abraham Lincoln and like yeah. freeing slaves and like Lincoln's repeater, like his gun yeah. and and his top hat and stuff. Like this stuff is cool. It is really interesting and it actually makes the games feel more fun and alive. And it also, by the way, does make you feel like you as a player have individual loot that nobody else in the game world has. Right. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Number, Number two, two, the Duro Dose. Okay, the next one I have might be a bit controversial with Fallout 76 fans. I want to say you and I enjoy that game casually. It is probably our least favorite Fallout, but we like it. This point is that Fallout does not need to be an MMO. Okay, if you want to make a side game here or there in the franchise that's multiplayer, Cool. I, I don't care. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Have fun with it. I don't think Fallout needs to transition to more of a multiplayer thing at all. Neither does Elder Scrolls. Really none of these single player RPG games do. Fallout 76 has improved over time. It's not at all like a bad game right now. It wasn't very good when it launched in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there. But it wasn't very well planned out from the start. You know, Fallout 76 was more of an experiment that most people in the sphere of being an RPG fan or a Fallout fan did not actually ask for. I guess my biggest complaint with Fallout 76 specifically is the game, I feel like you could have had the multiplayer mode in the game, kind of like GTA 5, but also just have the map in a single player setting as well. Like, wh why couldn't you just have the game, but then also have the online multiplayer? I don't, I don't get why the game exclusively had to be online multiplayer, because the thing is with Fallout, the, game, the, the reason why people love Fallout is because of the story. It's because of the characters. It's the RPG element. It's immersing yourself in the world of Fallout. The reason why people love Fallout is not because they're like, oh, you know what would be fun? What if we take a mini nuke and go blow up this random person's base that he spent six hours working on? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Like, no one wants this. Right. This is not like a Battlefield or, you know, GTA 5. It doesn't need to be the main experience for Fallout. And then the nice thing with it is it 76 has improved in that way over time. Yeah. Like, it's much less trolly now. It's much more along the lines of mutual engagement combat. Mm -hmm. I will say it's geared more now towards cooperative play than it is towards obnoxious trolling in any way. But it is still something that no one demanded was in the game. You know, right. like, I think that it's really egregious that you pretty much have to play online. And it's kind of... I'm wondering like what's going to happen to this game eventually when it goes offline. Are you going to be able to play that game in 10 years? Because like you can play New Vegas still today as if it came out yesterday. In fact, it works better like on mm -hmm. Xbox Series X, for example, and PC now than it did when it launched. So my question is, does that change? Will that preserve the game? Will it actually make it better or will it allow it to exist as it does now in years from now because I, I would say no i mean even if you could somehow 
create a game or create like fan servers for Fallout 76 where people could still play together in the future, not as many people are going to be playing. Right. So you've already cut out a significant feature just by focusing it around multiplayer instead of single player. That world that you required other players in to feel alive is going to be pretty dead even if you can play in it once there's no other players. This is a problem with every multiplayer game. It does not mean multiplayer games are bad. It is not the same game in 30 years if I go sit in the MW2 lobby and no one's online as it was on launch day when there were thousands of people playing. Right. A portion of that game is now gone. Mm -hmm. And that frustrates me. Because I don't think Fallout ever had to go that direction. Right. And I'm fine with them expanding it, but don't make that be the main feature. Like, if you want to have the multiplayer mode, great. I'm all for that. Yeah, you want to invite your friend into your single-player yep. world and do a quest with them or something? I'm fine with that. That's cool. That sounds fun. Number one! Splat. Bringing back more RPG elements. Okay, I know that I talk about New Vegas a lot. Fallout New Vegas is probably my favorite game ever, mm -hmm. personally. That game does one thing amazingly, almost above all else, and that is that it's a role-playing game. More storylines connect to each other. There are more NPCs and characters and quests in the game referencing each other and that change based on previous things you did than almost any other game I can think of. And this is a game that's like two generations of console hardware old. Uh, there's reputation points and standings with different factions that govern how people treat you and who you can easily work with in the game. You know, those things were much better done in a game like New Vegas than they were in Fallout 3, Fallout 4, or even Fallout 76. Even uh, skill points. Mm -hmm. I personally, like, I love the perk chart in Fallout 4, but I really love, like, being able to up skill points in different things and that affecting what kind of character you are. Are you a more stealthy person in Fallout New Vegas? Well, then maybe you're going to pick the lock on this door. Are you not? You don't have a high stealth or high lock picking? Okay, well, maybe you're just going to headshot this guy instead. Yeah. That kind of stuff made the game feel more unique and interesting. It seemed like Fallout 4 especially wanted to, like, have its cake and eat it, too, with this stuff, where they just wanted you to be a general player character. Yeah, that was something that took me a little bit to figure out in New Vegas was actually that... Uh, the game very quickly sets you into one category. And with Fallout 4, I felt like you could play most of the game without it actually affecting much. Whereas with New Vegas, for example, it was like, you know, within the first few hours, it was basically like, oh, well, you're helping out the NCR right now. So Caesar's Legion hates you. Or, oh, you're helping out Caesar's Legion, so the NCR hates you. Like, you basically have to pick where you're going, and then every choice you make from then on affects that too mm -hmm. like just because you help out the ncr doesn't necessarily mean you have to pick the ncr but it just means that it kind of ruins your chances with other people too so like if you help out the ncr for a few missions the the caesar's legion is going to hate you well then if you want to randomly switch to help out the caesar's legion it might not work that well because you're vilified so yeah. like they're not going to want to talk to you or maybe you take the mark of caesar from the strip and you go to the fort and you immediately switch sides and you stick with caesar's legion and then it right. works well too i mean you you are making those decisions as you go i understand why they did this in four differently and i understand why some people like that like they like being able to work with the railroad they mm -hmm. like being able to work with the brotherhood at the same time but at a certain point it doesn't even make any sense like right. the Brotherhood of Steel with their massive airship that's monitoring everything, <laughs> they don't care that you're helping basically run an underground railroad saving synths that they hate and call abominations. Right. They just don't care because you happen to not help them in the final mission. Mm-hmm. Why? That doesn't make any sense. You know, like there's no loyalty to those factions. It makes those connections feel much more surface level. And speaking of that with the with the RPG elements. Whatever happened to karma? Right. There's not really a lot of penalties for, like, stealing stuff, for example. Or even being just an evil prick. Right. There's, like, it's just kind of like, oh, okay. Basically, the only problem is if you get caught stealing. Yeah. In, like, Fallout 4, for example. Uh, but yeah, in, like, New Vegas and 3, there was karma. It was like, oh, you uh, stole that item? Well, your karma's gonna drop. 
And that was always a thing with classic Fallout 2 was they actually, they measured what kind of person you were. Those were staples of the franchise that people liked, you know, and a lot of people did feel like, um, and you and I still love 4, you know, we still love 4, but there were a ton of fans of classic and modern Fallout who felt that 4 kind of abandoned the RPG elements and went for more of just a casual gameplay. Yeah, that's one thing about the next Fallout game. I think they were, this is probably the biggest thing I think they need to add in is the RPG elements again. Because as much as I love 4, I probably like it the best out of any of the Fallout personally. Uh, the RPG elements from New Vegas and 3 are definitely way better. <laughs> Like, yeah. Like, way better. It, it makes your character more of a personalized, you actually care what your actions are kind of a character. Whereas in 4, it's just like, oh, there's a stim pack, cool, I'll take it. But in 3, it's like, oh, that stim pack, or in New Vegas in 3, it's like, there's a stim pack, it's red. Do I want to risk losing the karma? Or do I just want the stim pack? Yeah, those things actually mattered and made you question your decisions versus just doing whatever's most convenient for you at every turn in modern Fallout. Yeah. The best parts of modern Fallout, like Fallout 4 and, you know, even 76, the things that those do best, mixing that kind of stuff with the things that New Vegas did best, the mm -hmm. things that 3 did best, and even some of the thematic elements of, like, Fallout 2 that New Vegas was able to bring into it, all of those things together would really make an amazing Fallout that I think fans of both styles of games could get behind. I just want to see the best parts of all the Fallouts kind of combined. I don't want to see a game where it's outdated and doesn't work right in five or ten years, but I also don't think that Fallout needs to necessarily stay 100% in the past. You can have most of the gameplay of like New Vegas, but the shooting from four. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. It's just a modernization. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on this? Are you a fan of Fallout or you're not? I'm assuming you are if you stayed to this point. Or you're just very lonely like I have been my entire <laughs> life. In which case, I sympathize with you. Uh, you know, we're always looking for different opinions and stuff. And be sure to check out the description down below where we have our secondary channel, Degenerate Plays, where Nate and I play through a ton of games together and hang out. And we have all of our other stuff like social media and everything there too. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.